Is Omicron traveling with you? After Alpha, Gamma and Delta, this new variant of the coronavirus is now making headlines. Because of it, many countries have once again imposed severe travel restrictions. The fear the new variant could be even more contagious and the vaccines could work less well against it. In countries with a high COVID vaccination ratio, breakthroughs are increasing. This means an infection with COVID-19 despite being vaccinated. This development is worrying many and the reason for many rumors surrounding the efficacy of the vaccines. So I find Jetzt werde ich auch immer mehr verunsichert, weil ich mir denke, die Impfung hat nichts gebracht. Also ich möchte die dritte Impfung nicht haben, weil ich davon ausgehe, dass ich wahrscheinlich alle halbe Jahre mich impfen lassen müsste. Will ich nicht. Also ich denke, es bereitet vielen Menschen Panik und auch viele Konflikte bezüglich Menschen und der Politik, dass viele Fragen offen sind. Wie ähm, sehr vertrauen Sie den Impfstoffen? Gar nicht. Ich glaube, ich fühle mich nicht geschützt. Ich behalte Abstand und äh, gehe nirgendwo mehr rein. The vaccines don't work. False. The corona vaccines are highly effective, but not 100%. With the new Omicron variant, there is great concern that the vaccines protect less well than against previous variants. Reliable data is not yet available, but vaccine producers like BioNTech, Pfizer and Moderna have already announced that they will adapt their vaccines if necessary. The vaccines from BioNTech, Pfizer, Moderna and AstraZeneca, for example, are said to be around 75% effective against a symptomatic infection with the Delta variant. And the situation is similar with the Indian co-vaccine. That means the probability of getting sick is 75% lower. However, there is still a residual risk with these and other vaccines. And this is also reflected statistically. With over 3 billion fully vaccinated worldwide, there is still a considerable number of people who get COVID. If you look at the numbers and the proportions between vaccinated people with breakthrough infections and unvaccinated people who get infected, then the relative risk is like tenfold higher for unvaccinated people to get infected. However, at the moment, we do have very high levels of infection rates and they produce a pressure on the vaccinated people. And so all of a sudden, the people at risk are the so-called low responders who have already a little declined response. Nevertheless, the immunological memory is there, but there is the chance still to get infected. And this is what we are seeing. According to official information, Sputnik V from Russia also protects 83% against the more contagious Delta variant. However, Russia has not yet disclosed any scientific evidence for this. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine, on the other hand, is considered less effective by health authorities. There were relatively many breakthroughs for this vaccine. For this reason, People vaccinated with the J&J &J are now recommended to get a booster shot with a different vaccine in a short time period in several countries. It seems to be similar with Sinovac and Sinopharm. The little information available regarding the Delta variant suggests that the two Chinese vaccines are less effective against the most common variant of the coronavirus. The vaccination only works for a short time. Misleading. One cause for the increase in vaccination breakthroughs in some countries is the fact that vaccination protection decreases over time. After a while, the immune system doesn't remember the encounter with COVID-19 that well. The antibodies decrease again. Exactly when this happens is currently being researched in many countries. In this not yet peer-reviewed study from the UK, for example, Researchers observed how the effectiveness of three vaccines developed over several months after the second dose. The result, the effectiveness against the symptomatic illness with Delta after the BioNTech-Pfizer vaccine has significantly decreased after roughly five months. With AstraZeneca, it even sinks to below 50%. And with Moderna, the protection slightly diminishes in the first three months. You know, in terms of the duration of efficacy, I think we're still learning as we speak. Um, in, I think broadly speaking, it looks like 
uh, perhaps right around six months mark after the completion of the vaccination that you know, people are coming in, um, are, are at a higher likelihood of developing a breakthrough infection. In addition to the antibodies, other cells and mechanisms also play a role in the immune defense. These include T memory cells and B memory cells, which can remain in the body for years. It is assumed that they can also provide long-term protection against corona. While the T cells can fight corona-infected cells, the B cells produce antibodies again when necessary. This does not necessarily prevent an infection, but ensures a much milder course. Therefore, the vaccination still has a benefit for people, even if there is a breakthrough. Overall speaking, I think we are definitely seeing that the breakthrough cases are far milder in terms of symptom, in terms of the symptoms they develop compared to those who are unvaccinated. This was the headline of Bild, the largest circulating German tabloid. 45% of the over 60 year olds in the hospitals are vaccinated. What was vaccination actually good for? Misleading. It is true that in Germany, for the age group of 60 and above, there were as many COVID patients in hospitals who were vaccinated as those who had not been vaccinated. But that doesn't mean that both groups are equally likely to end up there. For example, let's say out of 100 people, 90 are vaccinated and 10 are not. Then two vaccinated and two unvaccinated end up in hospital. So they are actually 50% vaccinated and 50% unvaccinated. But one must not forget that the two unvaccinated hospital patients come from a much smaller group of people. Seen in this way, 20% of all unvaccinated people end up in hospital and only 2.2% of all vaccinated. That is a big difference. For the age group under 60, the vaccination breakthroughs and breakthroughs with a difficult course are even fewer. Because the younger you are, the lower the risk of a serious COVID disease and a breakthrough in vaccination. The alte Mensch um, altert ja nicht nur an Jahren, sondern uh, es altert auch sein Immunsystem. Damit baut er um, weniger Antikörper auf. Und äh, leider wurden durch Studien auch festgestellt, dass beim alten Menschen die Antikörper auch schneller abgebaut werden und der Schutz damit nicht so lange erhalten bleibt. Pre-existing conditions can also be a reason for the corona vaccination to not work as well, such as diabetes, cancer or cardiovascular diseases. That is why health authorities in many countries recommend booster vaccinations, especially for these risk groups and for the elderly. So amongst all these discussions around breakthrough infections, it's very important to mention that in many European countries, especially in Germany, for example, the proportion of unvaccinated people is still too high and they are at high risk of getting infected. And this is actually what we are seeing with these constantly high infection rates that we observe in Germany. And if we are sort of not able to reduce the proportion of unvaccinated people, this will be a situation that's hard to be controlled in the winter. I would like to really emphasize that it makes sense to consider to get vaccinated. To sum it up, vaccine breakthroughs do not mean vaccination failure. We know the vaccines do not offer a complete protection, also because they were developed against the initial virus and not its variants. However, they do protect from hospitalizations and severe cases. As the protection decreases over time, and not everyone is protected to the same extent, booster shots are highly recommended. What about you? Are you planning to get a booster shot?